Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. Quickly spun off the Danny Thomas Show came the hyper-successful The Andy Griffith Show. But after 249 episodes, Griffith was ready to transition himself out. So they began by retitling the show to Mayberry RFD. First, let's clarify what RFD means. It stands for Rural Free Delivery. The show began with the episode Andy and Helen's Wedding. This show was the highest viewed episode in television history all the way up to its air date in 1968. Then Andy slowly handed the reins over to the multi-talented Ken Berry. And he came in with some sharpened comedic acting skills straight out of F Troop. Get on, some blood was spilled. Ken led Mayberry RFD successfully until it fell prey to the rural purge of the early 70s, when one actor described it as getting rid of every show with a tree in it. Well, the legacy of the late, great Andy Griffith and that of the late, great Ken Berry will live on fondly in our classic TV memories. <laughs> Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. You know what two of my favorite classic TV westerns were? The Big Valley and Gunsmoke. And do you know what the two shows had in common? Well, clearly they were both westerns and they both had incredible casts. But even more interesting was the amount of iconic guest stars they shared. For example, there was Bruce Dern, who played a total of nine different characters on both shows. Robert Loggia, Charles Bronson, and Oscar winner Martin Landau also guest starred. They both had Cloris Leachman, Dennis Hopper, and Richard Dreyfuss. And classic television came well represented too. Both shows had Russell Johnson, William Shatner, and Adam West. Great storylines, lots of action, and deep drama, they both had those too. Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. The legendary comedy The Munsters ran from 1964 to 66. It was filmed on the Universal lot, and they based the characters off the Universal monsters. Towards the end of season one, episode number 37 to be precise, the Munsters introduced us to Herman's boss, Mr. Gateman. He was the head of a three-partner funeral parlor named Gateman, Barry Good, and Graves. Mr. Bateman was played by the iconic actor John Carradine. Having been in 117 feature films, John had played many roles. But fitting to the Munsters, horror seemed to be his specialty. As a matter of fact, Carradine appeared in two mega classics, The Invisible Man and Bride of Frankenstein. He also had roles portraying Dr. Frankenstein and Count Dracula. So not only was Carradine a perfect fit to the Munsters, it was as though he was part of the family. Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. The Banana Splits Adventure Hour had this fun serial short known as Danger Island. It featured a young Jan Michael Vincent and coined the popular phrase, Chango! Chango was a good yet mischievous castaway who spoke in nothing but bird chirps and monkey calls. <laughs> and he was played by actor stuntman Kim Kahana. Starting as a simple extra in the movies, Kim soon found out that stuntmen made a lot more money. Thus, he began his career as a Hollywood stuntman, prominently becoming one of the highest paid in the business. Kim's large amount of movie work included Cool Hand Luke, Patton, and Planet of the Apes. He also did a vast amount of classic TV as well. And his small stature meant that he could stunt double for actresses, too. That wasn't always Sally Field flying around as a nun. Kim's personal philosophical quote is, maybe I'm where I ought to be. Keen words from an actor stunt double who never spoke a single word on Danger Island. Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. The Partridge Family ran for four seasons from 1970 to 74. And here's a few things that you may not have known about them. In their first season, the opening song had different lyrics and a different title. It went from When We're Singing to Come on, get happy. Originally, Shirley Jones was the only actor that was supposed to sing on the show. That was until they heard David Cassidy sing on the demos. And still, he said they used to speed up his voice for the albums to give him a more youthful sound. In 1971, even though the Partridge family was a fictitious group, they still got nominated for a Grammy as Best New Artist. It probably would have been a bit awkward had they knocked out the Carpenters for the award. Well, perhaps the Partridge family's most amazing feat was to knock the Jackson 5's I'll Be There out of the number one slot with I Think I Love You. Well, a Grammy nod and a Jackson bump is quite an achievement for a band that only existed on your TV screen. <laughs> 